a reading from the beginning of the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised previously through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel about his son, descended from David according to the flesh, but established as son of God in power, according to the spirit of holiness, through, the res through, through resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we have received the grace of apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith. For the sake of his name, according to the Gentiles, among, all, among whom are you also, who are, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all the beloved of God in Rome, called to be holy, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verbum Domini. The Lord has made known his salvation. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has made known his salvation. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has made known his salvation. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. Dominus forbiscum. Lexio sancti evangelii secundum lucum. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah they repented, and there is something greater than Jonah here. Verbum Domini
He came preaching the kingdom of God, forgiving sins, receiving the outcast and rejected, embracing the poor and afflicted. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came in charity and humility. However, their hearts were hardened. They could not see that this was God. They did not recognize that this love was profound and great because their hearts were hardened. These people Jesus is addressing in our gospel reading are the Pharisees and those people who consider themselves religious. This passage is not for those who are out in the world, the sinners or those people we consider evil or bad. Rather, it's for us who fill the pews week after week, day after day. Jesus is calling us to examine ourselves. Like the Pharisees, like those who considered themselves religious, we too fail to see true humility and true charity. Sometimes our expectations are too high or ideal of perfection. We miss the work of God many times. We are caught up in the externals. Well, things have to be this way or that way. They don't chant the way they're supposed to. They don't look like they should look. They don't talk like they should be talking. They don't dress like they should be dressing. We often become critical and skeptical. Instead of becoming charitable, we become evil like the Pharisees here. We forget about God and our hearts become hardened. But Jesus Christ, Jesus makes all things new. They wanted a sign from him. Jesus wants to make us the sign. And in making us the sign, the sign of his love, the sign of his mercy and forgiveness, of his charity and humility, he wants to transform us. But if our hearts are hardened, he cannot work within us. So he calls us to humility. In this chapter, chapter 11 here of Luke, Jesus begins the chapter by talking about prayer. We all need prayer. St. Paul is calling us to greater faith, the obedience of faith. We all need God. Jesus calls us to be dependent on him. And when we are dependent on him, when we go to him as our refuge, as our source of strength, as our first love, then he supplies us with what we need. But when our hearts are hardened, we think ourselves do it. And then that's when we become critical, skeptical. And when we start judging, our hearts become hardened at that time but our lives are to be lives of prayer, lives immersed in God, so that we can be transformed and be Jesus' present, presence to the world, loving like he loves, and having mercy as he has mercy, and being humble as him. This is necessary. You know, many times we've heard that people come into church and then they don't want to come back. They say that the church is filled with hypocrites and liars because when they came to church, they were judged. They were thrown out because they weren't perhaps dressing modestly. You know, maybe they never knew how to dress modestly or because they didn't look the way they should look. We, like Jesus, are to embrace all people, to love those who are afflicted, of course, with physical 
ailments, but those with the ailments of sin. They are to be loved. Jesus embraced everybody. We see this in the Samaritan woman, how he loved her so much. So following the example of our Lord Jesus Christ, we need to cling to him. And that must be our prayer. Our prayer must be that we be a sign of him. The sign that contradicts the world. The sign that shows his merciful love so that people can come to Christ. And by many times, the way they're going to come is by our own example, by our own witness, by what we say and what we do. That's how they will be convinced. So again, Jesus calls us to be like himself so that, like St. Paul says, it is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives, in with, that lives within me. Christ gives us everything we need. He gives us his love. He gives us his power. But all we have to do is open our hearts to him and depend on him and love him. And he will do the rest. Praise be God.